when we start talking about families, we have to have a way to kind of talk about them. And um, Lewis Henry Morgan, if you'll remember, is one of the um, evolutionists, anthropologists. Um, and so he identified kind of six basic kinship, kinship terminology patterns, but they were ranked on an evolutionary scale. Because remember, that was his kind of um, prerogative there with the evolutionism was to rank everything. So he's ranking um, kinship. But then um, Kruber comes along and continues this research on kinship terms and how people understand their kin relationships. And he was saying that it should be based on clan organization and not based on an evolutionary scale. Okay, and so um, he starts to classify people based on these um, different kinship terms instead of based on an evolutionary scale. So he's looking at um, how people are actually related in their clan organization and that being the determining factor in the different language they choose for their kinship groups. And so we kind of have a lot of different um, ways to organize kinship terminology, but when we look at all of those, we can actually see some basic systems of organization that occur throughout different cultures. So um, even if the words themselves are different, the organization tends to be um, the same or similar. So we're going to talk about those in just a minute, but remember that the terms aren't just descriptive. They aren't just saying, well, this is my mother and this is my brother, but they also indicate specific relationships, um, rights and responsibilities between those two people. So the relationship between your mother and your brother um, and yourself, those are all different relationships, and that term can indicate that relationship. So here are the six main kinship systems. Your book really only talks about the Eskimo or Inuit kinship kinship system in the Iroquois kinship system. Okay, but um, I'm going to show you all of these, and, and again, this is from a different textbook, but um, I think this really highlights very well the similarities and differences in kinship terminology. So in every one, you have um, yourself here, and then siblings um, would be beside you. And if you'll see, those terminology are all the same as we move through. Siblings is the same. Okay, um, but then you start to see some differences arise when you look at what we would refer to as cousins. So we use the Eskimo or Inuit kinship system. And so we refer to the children of our uncles and aunts as our cousins, all the same. When you look at a Hawaiian kinship system, what we would refer to as cousins are called siblings. They're the same. Um, Omaha is kind of similar. So you've got um, siblings referring to... Um, brothers and sisters, but then also to um, one or two sets of possible sets of cousins. So um, your father's brother's children and your mother's sister's children. Um, so really your aunt on your mom's side and your uncle on your father's side, to use our terms. Um, those children are considered siblings as well. Okay, um, Whereas the children of your father's sister and your mother's brother are not considered siblings. Um, and it, this is very different than our system, but they're still classifying um, sort of similarly, but that one's pretty different. Um, and then you can see on the other side, the other three um, start to become even more different than what, what we use in our kinship system. Um, Really, the differences start to occur mostly in what we refer to as cousins and how we refer to our cousins and how we relate to those people. Okay, and some of that can be based on um, matrilineal or patrilineal descent or um, any of the other multi-lineal um, descent systems. So um, it really influences the terminology we use and also the relationships we use because, like we just said, they are related. So Kruber then went on to um, have eight kind of rules that outlined um, kinship relationships. And so are the kinship terminology and what they mean. Okay, so um, the terminology can change based on generation. So referring to people within your generation or people outside of your generation. Um, also between lineal and collateral relationships differences of age within a generation, the sex of the relative or the speaker, 
which we see, right? So um, with the relative, but not of the speaker. So we have an aunt and an uncle, both are siblings of your parent, um, but they have different terms because of the sex of the relative. Um, in some places, the term will change based on the sex of the speaker. So what I might refer to in one way, my brother will use a different terminology. Okay. Um, and then sometimes the sex of the person through whom the relationship exists is important. So that's where you'll see different terminology for an aunt on your mom's side versus an aunt on your father's side, for example. Um, then there's the distinction between blood relatives and um, connections through marriage, which we definitely have in our culture. So um, brother versus brother-in-law, mother versus mother-in-law. Okay, And then the condition of life of the person through whom the relationship exists. So Kruber outlines these different kind of um, influences on the kinship terminology that we use when he starts discussing and theorizing about kinship terms.